Welcome to Kenyan Dog Tales. This is the story of my life as a doctor. The experiences that I've lived through. My name is Dr. Luciana. Today I want to talk about salt. Low blood salt. Yeah, you got that right. Salt, not sugar. I know people talk about sugar and they don't know that salt exists. Low blood salt can kill you. I want to tell you a short story. There was this elderly man who got episodes of confusion, vomiting, loss of appetite, name it, anything. And he ended up in hospital several times over. The problem was low blood salt. I talked to him severally, told him about salt, and he didn't seem to believe me. I guess he wanted to believe the village doctors. You know, in the village, there are all cadres of doctors, people who know everything. And they told him that salt is bad. Don't take salt. And he listened to them. So he was in hospital, in and out of hospital. Until finally, we lost this man. This man was my father, my own father, my daddy. What contributes to low blood salt? When people refuse to take salt in their food because they are scared of high blood pressure, when people say that the doctor told me not to take salt, what they don't realize is that the doctors don't tell you not to take salt. The doctors tell you to moderate on your salt. So take a bit of salt and it will help you. There's another group of people that takes too much water. When you take too much water, it washes away the salt in your blood and you end up with low blood salt. There is this myth about water before breakfast, water after every two hours, water, water, water. What happens is that these people dilute their blood. They wash away the sodium in their blood. Sodium contributes to the salt in the body because salt is sodium chloride. Incidentally, I don't take water myself. Not that it harms me, but I get nauseated when I drink water. So my friends wonder, why don't you take water? And I keep telling them, when we say you need water, it's not strictly water, H2O. You can take it in juice, you can take it in soup, you can take it in anything, as long as you've taken some fluid into your system. So it doesn't have to be strictly water, clear water, H2O. And how do you know that you're taking too much water now? I think I'm getting people a bit scared. How do you know you're taking too much water? If you take water just because you have to, not because you're thirsty, then maybe you're taking too much water. If you go to the loo, for example, and after you are through, the water is clear, clean, then maybe you're taking too much water. Because water in the loo, after you are through, needs to change color. It needs to turn amber, because urine is amber. So if you're passing copious amounts of clear fluid, then maybe you're taking too much water. But there's a point of caution here. There are some people who get so thirsty, they need to take a lot of water, and then they pass out a lot of water. Those people may be diabetic. So if you're taking too much water because you're thirsty, and passing out too much water because you're drinking in a lot, then maybe you need to have your blood sugars checked. This just as a point of caution. If you are diabetic, then you need to see the doctor and you need to stick to the schedules that the doctor tells you. So this talk today is not about diabetes, it's about low blood salt. I've had people walking in and out of hospital and they were not aware what they are aiding from, especially the elderly people. It gets very complicated because they have other ailments that affect them. 
and the low blood salt does the mean. We've buried many elderly people and people think it's old age. Oh, he went because of old age. But probably he went because of low blood salt. So I would like us to take a bit of caution. Don't drink too much water. Take some salt in your food. If you're hypertensive, don't add extra salt in your food. Even if you feel like the salt is not enough, don't add any extra salt because whatever is in the food is going to be adequate for you. Let's take care of our bodies.